In this exercise, we will cover the maintenance procedures for our SpinCat SC212. The SpinCat line features downhole tools for cleaning coil tubing units, specifically the removal of plugs, scale, and failed linings. The SC212 model features operating pressures up to 5,000 psi and a flow range of 0.8 to 2.0 barrels per minute. The tools required for these procedures include the two SC212-105 wrenches that came with your spin cat, pick, a slot screwdriver, hex wrenches, modified snap ring pliers, a chain wrench, blue goop anti-seize, and grease. A press will also come in handy when installing the shaft seals. In addition to the tools, you will also need a service kit or overhaul kit shown here. We'll review the contents of the maintenance kits at the end of this video. Let's review the main components of the SC212. The head, the gland, body, inlet nut, weep seal, and two port screws. Begin disassembly by securing the head in a vise with the inlet nut facing up. Using a pick, remove the weep seal. Remove the two port screws with a slot screwdriver. Using the two spin cat wrenches, loosen the inlet nut. Note the lower spin cat wrench is on the flats for the gland. Unscrew the inlet nut. Note the shaft seal and carbide face seal. We'll remove those items in a moment. Using modified snap ring pliers, remove the face seal from the inside of the shaft. Note the seal has two flattened edges and fits in the shaft a specific way. The chamfer side is facing up. Next, use a pick to remove the spring and the o-ring from inside the shaft. Set aside for cleaning. Now unscrew the body from the gland. You may need a chain wrench to loosen the body at first. Note a spin cat wrench is on the gland flats. Slide the body off the shaft assembly and set aside. At this point, viscous fluid may come out of the assembly at the bottom. This is to be expected. Remove the bearing ring from the top of the shaft. You may need to pry it loose with two slot screwdrivers. Slide the brass sleeve off, exposing the assembly on the shaft. Note the shim covering the weight set. Remove it. Now slide the weight set off the shaft. Note the three notches in the weight set match the three posts on the hub. Now remove the hub and spring together. With the spring off the shaft, separate the end from the hub. You can also see here where the second spring end fits into the notch in the collar. Remember this when reassembling. Note the relieved groove on the collar faces up. The spring rests on that groove. Unscrew the collar halves with a 3 32nds inch hex wrench. Remove the bearing ring from the bottom of the shaft and set aside for cleaning. Slide the gland assembly up and off the shaft. You may need your slot screwdrivers again here as shown. The remaining shaft and head should look like this. Now place the gland assembly in a vise with the threads facing up. Remove the o-ring with a pick. The gland assembly has two shaft seals. Gently pry out the first shaft seal with a slot screwdriver. Set aside. Repeat the procedure with the second shaft seal. Next we'll tackle the inlet nut. Place it in the vise with the threads facing up. Pry out the shaft seal. Remove the o-ring from the base of the threads. Next, remove the face seal from inside the inlet nut with snap ring pliers. This seal is identical to the one you removed from the main shaft a few minutes ago. With the face seal out, use a pick to remove the o-ring as shown. The inlet nut should now look like this. Your disassembly is now complete. Wash all parts in solvent and blow dry. Examine the wear items and replace where necessary. These are the key wear items. The high temperature shaft seals, port screws, carbide face seals, small and large springs, small and large o-rings, the shim, weep seal, brass sleeve, and bearing rings. Each of these items is included in our overhaul kit along with viscous fluid and anti-seize. Begin the reassembly process at the press where you will install the shaft seals and o-rings in the gland assembly and inlet nut. Begin with the gland, placing the o-ring at the base of the threads. Next, we'll install the two shaft seals. 
For all of our shaft seals, we recommend using P80 Grippet or a similar lubricant for installation. Press the first seal into place using a spacer tool as shown. The first seal goes in lip side facing down. Press the second seal into place, once again using the spacer tool. This second seal goes in with the lip side facing up. Set the assembly aside. The inlet nut is a little different. Before pressing in the shaft seal, you need to replace the o-ring and face seal inside the inlet nut shaft. Use a pick to place the o-ring in the groove. Now apply grease to the o-ring. Next, place the face seal in the shaft. Note the two flattened edges on the seal match the mount in the shaft. Now, back at the press, replace the o-ring at the base of the inlet nut threads. Prep the shaft seal with lubricant and press it into place, this time with the lip side facing up. With the gland assembly and inlet nut prepped, let's go back to the vise. Secure the head in the vise with the shaft facing up. Using a pick, install the o-ring down in the shaft. After the o-ring is in place, apply some grease. Next, install the spring and face seal in the shaft, greasing each generously. Note the seal has flattened edges to match the mount in the shaft. When installed properly, you should be able to activate the spring by pressing down on the face seal. Now let's place the gland on the shaft. Apply a generous amount of grease to the shaft seals in the gland and at the same time grease the shaft itself. Slide the gland onto the shaft. The first bearing ring goes on next. Now place the two halves of the collar around the shaft and join together with the hex screws. Use a 3 32 inch hex wrench for this step and be certain to tighten the two halves evenly so the gap is the same on each side. See how the relieved groove on the collar faces up. With the collar in place, note where the notch is to receive the end of the spring. Attach one spring end to the hub as shown and slide the spring onto the shaft with the hub end up. The bottom end of the spring will fit neatly into the notch in the collar as shown. Now place the weight set onto the shaft. Match the three notches in the weight set with the three posts on the hub. Replace the shim on top of the weight set and then slide the brass sleeve on. Follow that with the last bearing ring onto the shaft. It's time to replace the body over the entire assembly, but before we do that, apply blue goop anti-seize to the threads of the gland. Slide the body over the assembly and hand tighten using a spin cat wrench on the gland flats as shown. Next, fill the body with viscous fluid. We recommend GP040 viscous fluid, which we sell here at Stone Age. As you are filling the body with viscous fluid, pause several times to spin the body and lift it, which will help to settle the fluid into the body and force the air bubbles up and out. Keep filling with fluid until it covers the top bearing and no more bubbles appear. Next, grease the shaft seals, face seal, and o-ring in the inlet nut generously and brush blue goop on the threads. At the same time, grease the face seal, spring, and o-ring down in the main shaft. Now screw the inlet nut into the body. Note how viscous fluid oozes out as you tighten the inlet nut. This is to be expected. Clean off the excess with a rag and tighten the entire assembly using the two spin cat wrenches. Replace both port screws and the weep seal. Note the lip side of the seal faces down, covering the weep holes on the inlet nut. Your spin cat SC212 reassembly is now complete. However, before we finish up, let's take a look at the maintenance support available from Stone Age. We strongly recommend keeping one or more of these kits on hand to facilitate speedy service. First, we have a tool kit, which has only one item, the SC250-106 spacer tool shown here. It will help when reinstalling the shaft seals at the press and we highly recommend having one. This is the service kit for routine spin cat maintenance. It contains written instructions with diagrams, new o-rings, face seals, a spring, port screws, a packet of anti-seize, and viscous fluid with a syringe applicator. This is for injecting viscous fluid into the tool after removing one of the port screws. 
The overhaul kit naturally contains more items when it's time for a major rebuild. You'll find written instructions, high temperature shaft seals, port screws, carbide face seals, small and large springs, small and large o-rings, a shim, weep seal, anti-seize, brass sleeve, and new bearing sets. There is also a container of viscous fluid. Proper maintenance will improve both the performance and longevity of your spin cat. If you are performing routine service or an overhaul procedure, we recommend using all the new parts in the kit to make the most of your downtime. Thanks for your attention, and remember, our customer service specialists are always on hand to address any technical issues you may have.